Posit recently announced that their code editor, Positron, is available as a stable release. With it out of beta, I thought it might be a useful time to think about the pros and cons of using Positron compared to RStudio. Okay, so what you're looking at here is Positron. I don't have anything open, so it's pretty bare bones at the moment, but you can see what it looks like. Now, Positron's designed to work with R and Python. That kind of reflects the shift that Posit, the company, has made to support multiple languages. As someone who runs a business called R for the rest of us, I obviously focus on R. I think Positron is great even if you only use R. Okay, so back in Positron, I am going to open a folder, in other words, a project that I worked on recently. So this is a project here, and you can see we have our files here on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and open up this QMD file, this Quarto document. Okay, so you can see it looks pretty similar to kind of what we're used to. You've got code chunks here. Those are in that gray background. You've got the kind of run cell button, run next cell. And then if you actually scroll down to a lower cell or lower code chunk, you can hit this run above, which will run everything from the top down to this point. I'm going to open an R script file to actually show you what it looks like when you are working in R code. So I've got some code here that imports data. Let me go ahead and actually load those packages. So very similar, just highlighting things. I can either use that run button or I can use the keyboard shortcuts that I'm used to. There's actually a guide on the Positron website that shows you how to use kind of the same keyboard shortcuts that you're used to in R Studio in Positron. So you can see it lists some of them. And then it also tells you at the top kind of how to set those up. Okay, so I have done that. I'm going to actually scroll down here. So I'm going to run this code where I'm just importing a CSV. Now, when I do that, uh, let me bring this over a little bit. In the pane over here, if I go to session, that will show me the data that I have loaded. So this is the objects that I have loaded. I can then click this arrow and it will give me essentially like the glimpse view. If you're used to the glimpse function from the tidyverse, it'll show me kind of the first few observations for each variable. You can also right click and hit view data table. This will take you to this view, which I actually personally like a lot better. And you can take a look at your data. You can also do things here like add filters. So I can say, is equal to 94.7. And I apply that filter and I can see how many rows have that. One other thing I really like about Positron is that if you hover over a function, it will actually bring up the help file in line like this. So I can read, for example, about the clean names function without having to go down and hit question mark, clean names. I can do that, of course, and it will bring up the help file here. But again, I can also just hover. One thing that I really like here is the kind of file explorer. You can really easily get to files. So for example, I can go within the data raw or I can go, you know, in the R directory I can go in the assets directory. I can see all these. In contrast, I'm working in our studio now. So if I want to open something from the R folder, I have to go into R. I can open up import data, but then say I want to open up something else. I have to go back here find my other file, or if I want to see in the assets folder, I have to go there. But then if I want to go back to the R file, I have to click here. It's just a lot more clicking around. Another thing I really like in Positron is the find and replace. So say, for example, I want to find MMR coverage. It will show me really easily all the places where it shows up. And say I only want to find it in R script files, I can just say only look at .r files, or if I want to exclude R script files, I could add that there. And there are all sorts of ways you can, you know, match the whole word, match case, use regular expressions, etc. I also really like how you can right click and then hit, for example, reveal in Finder. That will take me to this place uh, in my Finder, and I can see, for example, in this reports directory, all of these reports that we have made. Overall, I find this pane, this Explorer pane, to be a much easier way to interact with files than in RStudio. 
Another thing I like about Positron is the Git tab here. So when you click that, if you use Git, you can actually see all of the commits here, which is handy. And you can see, for example, working in a branch and then merging a pull request back into the main branch. You can also write commit messages here. So like test commit message. And the really cool thing is, let's say you make a change. Let's say, for example, I decide, you know what? I don't need to import MMR data anymore. I'm going to remove all this. So I'm going to delete that. Now, if I go here, I can actually use this, generate commit message. Now, this relies on me being signed into my GitHub account which I will talk about in a minute, but the idea is it will actually use AI to see what have you changed and it will make a suggested commit message for you. Remove MMR coverage data processing section, which is pretty good. Okay, I don't actually want to do that, so I'm going to undo all that, remove that. The other nice thing with Git in Positron is that folders that are ignored, so for example, this documents folder is not included, is included in my Git ignore file, same thing with the reports folder. Because of that, it shows up in gray here, so we can tell that it is being ignored. Another thing about Positron is that it uses what are called extensions. Positron is a fork of a very common editor called VS Code. VS Code uses this idea of extensions. Extensions are kind of like add-ons that people make that do specific things. Let me show you a couple that I like for Positron. So I'm going to go to Settings, Extensions, and you can see I actually have a couple already installed. So Air, for example, let me say I have like inconsistent indentation like that. When I save it, it will automatically reformat my code. You can actually get that to work in our studio as well, but I really like how it works here in Positron. I have an extension for Quarto, which makes Quarto documents work. Let me show you another one though that has actually nothing to do with R. So all of these grayed out ones are ones that I've installed, but that are not active. So I'm gonna enable this one called To Do Tree. What this does is it allows me to see, for example, all the places where I've written to do whatever. And actually, spoiler alert, it's trying to use some AI here to do some suggested text for me. Okay, so I'm just gonna type something though, do this thing, and then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say to do, do this other thing. Actually, let me just make these comments. Let me copy that. Let me actually go over to my report document. I'll add here, do this third thing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to save that. So now you can see it's added this here. This is the icon for the to-do tree extension. Okay, so I've clicked this tree and I can see now, for example, in the R import data, it shows me all the places where I have those to-dos. I click them and it takes me directly to that. Same thing in the report.qmd. There are all sorts of extensions that you can use to do all sorts of things to help you improve your coding. One area where Positron really shines is in its use of AI. I recently attended PositConf where there were a lot of talks about Positron and a lot of them focused on how it uses AI. Let me show you a little bit about how this works. There are two ways that Positron is currently incorporating AI into the tool. The first is what's known as Positron Assistant. What you're looking at here is the website for Positron Assistant. It allows you to use models from Anthropic, so specifically the Claude set of models, to kind of chat with AI about your code, have it in many cases give you suggestions for your code. And then you can also use GitHub Copilot for what are called inline code completions. I'll show you how both of these work. There's also a tool called Databot. Databot allows you to use a chat interface to chat about your data. I actually found Databot a little bit less compelling as a tool than Positron Assistant. So I'll post a link. If you're interested in learning more about it, I would really suggest just taking a look at the documentation. All right, I'm back in Positron. I actually have to click this because I have several items that don't fit here. Okay, so I have opened up Positron Assistant here. You can see that it is allowing me to do things like add context so I could 
give it like files or folders. I could give it specific instructions, et cetera. I'm not gonna go in that level of depth right now. You can see though that it's working with R 4.5.1. It's working in this report.qmd. Actually, let me switch over. I'm gonna work in this import data.r file. You can see here there are different modes where you can kind of like have it work as what's called an agent. You can ask it questions. You can have it edit. I'm going to switch to ask mode. There are different models. You do need to provide your own API key. The documentation gives you instructions for how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to say, for example, adjust the target years to also include 2019-20. I'm going to run that. Positron Assistant is going to look at my code. It's going to think for a little bit. It says, looking at your code, I can see that target years is currently defined as that. And it says, basically, if you want to do that, here's how you would do that. And I think, I haven't actually used this a ton, but I think I can actually apply in editor. So it will actually add it there if I want to do that. I'm going to hit undo because I want to actually show you a different method. So I can go to edit, and I'm going to say, uh, and I actually grab that same thing, adjust the target years to also include 2019-20. So when I do that now, instead of giving it to me here, it'll actually, I think, yeah, it's going to directly edit my code to say, that's what I did. It'll show you, this is what I added. And again, I can either hit keep or undo. I'll hit keep and now that's added. Another way that you can work is you can say adjust the years to start from 2017, 18. So now when I go down here, it will basically use those instructions and give me suggestion. Another thing that I really like to use this for is if I say run this code and when I run it, you see I get this message unexpected string constant in 2018, 19, 2019, 20. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? I can click this explain button and Positron Assistant will explain what's going on. It can actually translate really difficult to understand messages and give you simple answers. Like the problem is you're missing a comma. Okay, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna say, go ahead and fix it. So now you're missing a comma, it's going to tell me what I need to do to fix it. I'm going to click this button to apply that in the editor. And all right, so that wasn't working for me. I don't really know why. Maybe I hit a bug in Positron Assistant. It is an early release. In any case, that's how Positron Assistant should work. Another piece of Positron Assistant is that it works with what's called GitHub Copilot which is a model that allows you to write code and have it kind of predict what you're likely to put next and start to write that code for you. So to show you what this looks like, I've got some code here that filters New York for 2017-18. Let's say I copy this. I put it down here and I say, Connecticut 2017-18. Now you can see it's going to guess that I want to create an object called CT filtered, where I'm starting with non-medical exemption in the States and U.S., basically the same thing as here. I don't know where that dose came from, so that's, that's not exactly right. But the school year, that looks right. Geography, Connecticut. I can either hit accept with a tab to get everything, or I can do it kind of word by word. I'll hit tab, and then I could say do that. I haven't actually run the code up above, so that didn't actually work, but you get the idea. All right, I've talked now about several things that I really like about Positron. Let me talk about what I see as some of the cons. The first is, of course, it's just a learning curve. As I've hopefully showed you, it's not that different from working in our studio, but when you're used to a tool, it just takes a little while to learn something different. There are a few other little things that I've found that just don't work the way I would like them to in Positron. For example, one thing I really like in our studio is I can click this packages tab and I can see all of the packages that I have installed. There's no equivalent to that in Positron. Another thing that I really like to do in our studio is I can hover over an object, use the command click functionality, and that pops up the object here, same way if I were to click it there. In Positron, when I click that, it actually takes me to the place 
think, where it's originally defined, it's not exactly what I want. I can, of course, go over here, right click and hit view data table, and it shows up. But I really like being able to just hit command click on objects. One other small issue that I've had when working in Positron is we do a lot of parameterized reporting. So you can see we've got a Quarto document here where we're setting a parameter where state is New Hampshire. And a lot of what we do subsequently relies on having access to params dollar sign state in this case. Now the problem is if I hit run cell, it's going to give me this error, object params not found. So for some reason, it does not know how to access that. In contrast, I'm in the same document in our studio. If I scroll down here, hit that play button, it will work. And you can see here where it creates an object of params, which is a list when we have state here with the value being New Hampshire. So that actually works. And that makes it a lot easier with debugging because I can run code chunks and have access to the parameter. So I hope this has given you a nice overview into what Positron is, how it works, as well as some of the pros and cons of switching to it. If you're using RStudio and don't have a problem with it, absolutely keep using it. There's no reason that you need to switch. If, however, you're interested in exploring Positron, hopefully this has showed you some of the reasons why I think it's a really exciting tool for the future.